Hey you, yeah you, watching this video, would you like to hear a sodium joke? Nah. Funny you said nah, because NA actually means sodium. Anyway, I'm gonna tell you a joke. What was the charge when sodium chloride was arrested? It was assault. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Dr. Ryan here again. Thank you for joining me on another algorithm and allow me to wish you a happy anniversary. Yes, it's a special day for us. It's our 20th algorithm together in internal medicine. And this is gonna be our seventh and final algorithmic approach in nephrology. I hope you all well. Thank you once more for liking and sharing and subscribing to this video and subscribing to my channel. I hope that uh, this series of videos has been helpful as we strive together to understand this beautiful discipline of internal medicine uh, more and more every day. So today we're talking about hyponatremia. Quick background, water homeostasis which controls serum sodium concentration is regulated by thirst and the hormonal interplay between the central nervous system and the kidneys. Maintenance of normal serum sodium concentration is important for preserving cell volume. Hyponatremia is generally defined as a serum sodium concentration of below 135 molar equivalents per liter. Now, clinical manifestations of hyponatremia depend on its duration and severity. Acute hyponatremia is defined by a duration of below 24 up to 48 hours. Acute hyponatremia is often symptomatic with manifestations that include nausea, malaise, lethargy, headache, delirium, obtundation, seizures, and coma. Chronic hyponatremia is often asymptomatic. Now, hyponatremia can be associated with serum hypertonicity, isotonicity, and hypotonicity. Now, that's the first uh, point of departure in our algorithm today. Hypotonic hyponatremia um, can be associated with extracellular hypovolemia, euvolemia, or hypervolemia. Now, hypovolemic hyponatremia results from extracellular loss of hypertonic fluid. Salt is lost more than water. Hypovolemic hyponatremia on this side uh, can be caused by renal or extra-renal processes. Euvolemic hyponatremia results from the extracellular gain of pure water. Now, euvolemic hyponatremia can be caused by vasopressin-dependent or vasopressin-independent processes. Hypervolemic hyponatremia results from the extracellular gain of hypotonic fluid, more water than salt. Uh, hypervolemic hyponatremia can be caused by renal or extrarenal processes. Now, acute symptomatic hyponatremia should be corrected rapidly with infusion of hypertonic saline and serial monitoring of your serum sodium concentration. Management of chronic hyponatremia depends on the underlying etiology, but can include fluid restriction, salt tablets, hypertonic saline infusion, furosemide, urea, and vasopressin antagonists. The rate of serum sodium concentration should be carefully considered to prevent the development of osmotic demyelination syndromes. Big buzzword there. So let's talk about this quickly. We said the first point of departure is, it, is, it, is the hyponatremia hypotonic or hyperisotonic? If it's hypo or isotonic, we speak about three etiologies, hyperglycemia, mannitol, pseudo-hyponatremia. So once you establish that you're dealing with a situation of hypotonic hyponatremia, there's 15 possible etiologies. If you're looking at the hypovolemic variety, we said that the two flavors are renal versus extra-renal. Under renal, it could be, like we said, diuresis, Primary adrenal insufficiency, we were looking at something like um, uh, Addison's and cerebral salt wasting versus extra renal, where it could be due to low oral intake or GI losses in the way of uh, vomiting and diarrhea. If the situation, let's go over the right hand side of the algorithm. If it's hypervolemic hypotonia, uh, hypotonic hyponatremia, I beg your pardon, we're looking at renal versus extra renal etiology. So if it's renal, the infamous renal failure or nephrotic syndrome. If it's extra renal, we're looking at heart failure, cirrhosis. I suppose you can also add in protein losing enteropathy there as well. But if the situation is that of euvolemic hypotonic hyponatremia, so the patient is clinically not overloaded, neither is the patient behind on fluids, then you look at whether it's vasopressin dependent versus vasopressin independent. If it's vasopressin dependent, the situation is syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion, all too common in our clinical setting, where there's too much of ADH produced, so the body is recouping too much of water, right? And then hypothyroidism can also cause its secondary adrenal insufficiency, uh, often TB adrenalitis, uh, citing that as an example, and a reset osmostat. So if it's uh, the vasopressin independent euvolemic hypotonic hyponatremia, then we're talking about primary polydipsia or beerport mania, giving you a grand total of 18 possible etiologies behind hyponatremia. 
I just want to encourage you today again, remember we don't build habits by making drastic changes. It's all about starting small and being consistent. I'm sure most of us have heard about the 2190 rule, that it takes you on average 21 days consistently to form a uh, habit. And it takes you 90 days of doing something consistently to um, form a lifestyle. Now, I'm sure all of us are aspiring to achieve certain goals, uh, be it to be consistent in our study program, to qualify with a certain uh, qualification, or it could be maybe weight loss or exercise to get in shape. Uh, whatever it is to draw closer to God as well, whatever it is, you've got to be consistent, right? First Timothy chapter 4, verse number 8. Now, here Paul is admonishing Timothy, who is, I would like to think, his spiritual son, telling him uh, in this particular scripture, for physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. So I hope that you have been encouraged. Of course, this is our last algorithm in nephrology. Tomorrow we're moving on to something different. And I hope that you're going to join me. It's going to be exciting. Take care and I'll see you soon.